Uh, yes, welcome back to the Bray and Ethan podcast, episode 132. And of course, it is all powered by Pegs. Download the Pegs app if you're a uni or TAFE student. It is an absolute game changer. You can get up to 50% off at some cafes, restaurants, retail outlets. It's absolutely amazing. And as we always say, it's locals supporting locals. And that, they had a successful day on Saturday. They did. Uh, Royale's I was, Northbridge. I was very disappointed Cuchinis. I couldn't get out there. But... Uh, yeah, up three hundred percent, I believe. Jai said in uh, in registrations and whatnot. So, wow. yeah, get on board with them. Hat Locker as well. Brian Ethan twenty for twenty percent off at hatlocker.com.au and also Field Ready Minds. Uh, still Freo tickets up for grabs there. Mm, so, uh, our jersey details in the description now. Unexpected episode cancellation last week, but we're back on the mend. Joining us is uh, a raw talent, pardon the pun, he's probably heard that one plenty of times before, from the State 18s and Claremont, Max Raw, welcome. Cheers boys, thanks for having me. Big episode today, it's a big episode, uh, even bigger weekend ahead though with the Claremont Cella, <laughs> which uh, all the boys have been promoting, have not seen the end of that, so uh, you'll be letting loose no doubt. Yeah, keeping it pretty tame, but um, yeah, the boys are pretty excited for that one, so yeah, hopefully it goes well. Yeah, no doubt, it sounds like a bit of a party. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you guys were opening up like a little nightclub for the public for one night. but <laughs> Well, there's tickets up for grabs. So if anyone wants, I've got four that I need to sort of give out. So if anyone wants them, feel free. But um, yeah, it's a bit weird this year because usually the theme is Claremont Jella. So it's mm. like a you mm. know, festival. But there's a rodeo theme this year. So, mm. you know, Joe Matthews getting up to no good. <laughs> yeah. Have uh, you got a DJ on the floor? Uh, I'm not too sure. I don't know. Like, I'm probably not the man to be asking. Yeah. I haven't organised it, but I'm sure that there will be, you know, a few lined up. Yeah, Some no of the, the socials have been really good uh, promoting it as well, but yeah. creativity, which we like. Yeah. I do like it. I do like it. Well, a lot of boys have told us that your performance off the field after last year's Colts flag was up amongst the best. Is there anything to say for yourself? Um yeah, uh, there is a bit to say. You enjoyed um, it, yeah? Yeah, no, it was good. Like, I'd never won a flag before, so had to celebrate in style. Um, probably went home earlier than I would have liked to, but... Uh, which, which was? Two o'clock? No, no, it was, like, <laughs> early. I got kicked out of the club, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, like, great, great celebrations. The boys loved it. Yeah. it was, like, good to just sort of let loose after a good year. Yeah, I thought it might have been you who maybe got kicked out. I heard someone said you might have been carried out. I don't know if that was the footy club or, or whatnot. But, um, I want to yeah. know who said that because yeah. that is not true. <laughs> but I remember someone ordered me an Uber, to be yeah. fair. But, um, but yeah, I was, I was all right. Because mm. a common question that's been sent in since that happened was um, to when you're obviously you haven't been, been in here, but your teammates like talk us through Max Raw's grand final performance off the field. And it's like yeah. this big thing that happened. So. Yeah, at least you we can actually know from your mouth who what actually happened, which is good, rather than <laughs> other people talking about it. Um, so yeah, but Subiaco Junior Footy Club. Yeah, how were your junior days, and when was it that you first went down to Claremont? Ah, uh, so I went down to Claremont a lot later than usual. Last year was my first year at Claremont, um, but Subi days were great. I uh, had Hamish Davis, Will Hayes, and you know plenty of my mates. Um, yeah, so love that. And going to Christchurch, a lot of my um, sort of schoolmates played at Claremont, so it was a good little rivalry. But, um, yeah, so they served me really well down at Subi. But, uh, yeah, as I said, sort of came to Claremont last year. Um, probably I'd like to think because I got injured a lot through that sort of development squad time. But, yeah, finally got the uh, opportunity last year after a decent ALCO season in Year 12. Um, and, yeah. Loved it since. And Subi Yako Junior Football Club, it's in the Claremont zone. Yeah, it's about it? ours, but, yeah. yeah, it's very weird. Um, I remember when I was younger, like trying to figure out who I should go for on the waffle because yeah. Yeah. big Freo fans, I liked Peel, liked Claremont, but then also like I played for Subi. Mm. So, yeah. but yeah, now staunch Claremont man. What's the um, Subi Junior Footy Club jersey? Is it the actual it's, waffle it is jersey a Lions as well? Jersey, it's, isn't it? it's a maroon jersey with a sort of line, like pretty similar to yeah. like. Does the, the Claremont Junior Footy Club's the exact same? Pretty much, the yeah. Waffle I think club, so. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Some people probably thought, well, maybe not when you were younger, but if you said you played for Subi, people probably <laughs> thought like you were up and coming in the yeah. development squad or Colts, etc. Yeah. 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 Well, as you said, Christchurch 
um, was where you graduated from a couple of years ago. Obviously, you'd still be close with a couple of guys from there and you're still doing a bit of stuff there as well with the footy program. So how was the overall PSA experience for you? Yeah, I loved it. Um, just that sort of having week-to-week competitive matches against good good schools and, yeah. uh, you know, Christchurch, we were never great, but um, I think I made my debut in year 11 uh, alongside, like, the likes of sort of Gus Eldrick and stuff. Um, and we were meant to be a really good team and we had a pretty poor year that year. But then the next year we lost our coach, we had no expectation and we actually ended up playing quite well and knocking off Hale and Aquinas. So, yeah, yeah really enjoyed my last year in particular. Sometimes that happens as well like when the pressure's off a bit. You um, maybe not have as much expectations. Mm. Um, so the grand final last year, maybe not your absolute best game personally, but you still had high impact when you had to kick the goal. Uh, yeah, how fondly do you look back at that top age years of yours, ach- achieving the ultimate and, as you said, the first premiership ever in your life or footy career? Yeah, well, funnily enough, when we mentioned Subi against Claremont in year eight, I lost... I hit the post with 30 seconds to go in double overtime against Claremont to lose a grand final. Wow. So, um, yeah, that that sort of long-awaited grand final win finally happened last year. You would um, have had nightmares over that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I sort of I remember coming back. Double and, overtime. Yeah, it was, it was the most insane game I've been a part of. And in, to hit the post late in the game and then have all my mates celebrate because they've won really sort of hurt. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, to go back to the Colts, like, last year, sort of first year in, um, I thought I put some decent footy towards the end of the year, but with all the state boys coming back, I was a bit unsure and I was playing a different role. Um, So throughout the finals weeks, I was a bit, like, not involved as much as I had been uh, earlier, but just to get selected in the first place was a massive win for me. And then I sort of acknowledged with game time and the role, like I wasn't going to tear it apart, but just to sort of be able to, um, I suppose, impact when I could was really like special. And uh, yeah, to get the win was great. Yeah, I bet. Now, I don't want to go back to a dark day, but when you say double overtime, is that like the two little halves that they play or is it you were still level when you went to Golden Point or something? I have a feeling it was just the two okay the two so it's like the port adelaide west coast game yes but but I th- it could have gone to like another half or something mm, i don't know crazy. i can't really remember too well sort of pushed it to the back of the memory but <laughs> yeah don't yeah like me. we sort of were drawing the whole game that's that's a nuts i don't know i know you were young Whoa. but i know mates like they probably reminded you of it for a while yeah 100 like, yeah yeah it just it just happens like that it would sting yeah well, of course, added to the State 18 squad this year and then played as a 19-year-old. So for people out there who have no idea how this is allowed, can you please explain? Well, to be honest, I had no clue I was <laughs> able to play. But, um, yeah, sort of just got contacted via the email. And, um, yeah, I think you're allowed to play as – because I was of age at Colts last year, didn't get picked. As a state player, you can play as – an overager. Yeah. So I turned 19, I think, the day after the induction ceremony. Right. So I felt a bit old. Because I know, uh, like, um, it's happened in the in the past, but, like, they've turned, like, the players turn 19 later in the year when it's the champs are done, but you were actually 19 while yeah. it was on. So, mm. yeah, did, um, did any opposition know about that? And if so, did they, I don't know, give you any crap for, like, being older? No, nah, I probably wasn't known enough to be given yeah. some crap, but... Um, yeah, it was a bit weird. Aiden Riddle, who's also an overager, mm. like he was in the year below me at school, so I yeah. felt like you know pretty old. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's only only an overage of like five days or something. Yeah, he was like late December. Mm. Um, four goals, notably against South Australia. How did it feel? And was it hard to keep a lid on the attention that you received after that? Um, well, yeah, it was a good day. Uh, sort of. I remember in the two practice matches before, one of them I felt like I played quite well. The other one was pretty disappointed. Um, and then the first game, obviously, like the allies, I think most boys in the team were pretty disappointed. Um, and it was just one of those days that, like, I, d- I didn't do anything different, sort of didn't feel like I set the world on fire with big contested marks, but just sort of managed to get on the scoreboard early. Um 
So, yeah, that was sort of, I guess, a bit of a reward for effort. But I think with the people I surround myself with and in particular my father, um, the lid was definitely not coming off. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The lid. Was there any interest from recruiters post that? Um, yeah. So I actually didn't have a manager because I just wasn't too sure. Um, so, yeah, Sydney got in contact that week where I think they got in contact with quite a few boys. So... Yeah, had a nice chat with them um, and then, yeah, a, man- a couple management teams sort of got involved and, um, yeah, signed with one of them. So, yeah. Who's that? Uh, Andrew McDougall. Okay, from yeah. corporate sports. sports yeah. Australia, yeah. It's crazy how, like, one performance can just, like, change things, yeah. hey? Like, yeah. four goals and two goals in that first quarter and then another couple and, and to top it off with a win as well. Yeah, 100%. Well, that's sort of all it was about. Like, we yeah. sort of, after that first game, pretty disappointed um, even like I know Irks, Luke Urquhart, like he had a really good game, but he was just disappointed that we didn't get the win. So um, just, yeah, the win comes first and then yeah. you sort of take the benefits of, you know, maybe mm. kicking goals or getting mm. a bit of the footy. So, yeah. Probably helped that it was on Fox footy as well. <laughs> a, yeah. bit of, a bit more eyeballs on it. Yeah. Um, 100%. Stuff. Yeah. Well, you kicked another goal against Vic Country. Did you feel any pressure externally or even within yourself to reach similar heights of kicking that bag you did against SA? Uh, I think, like, subconsciously there's always something there of, like, you want to keep your good form up. Yeah. Um, and I don't really look at it as goals, more just, like, playing my role, getting into the game. Um, and, yeah, the Metro, the Metro game at um, Optus after that, like, started well and then just sort of couldn't get into the game, missed two shots in the first quarter. Um but, yeah, then the country game, like, a bit similar. Um, so, yeah, I think it was just more that was a bit more frustrating in those two games just because we weren't as dominant on the scoreboard. So it's a bit like, oh, trying to do too much to, you know, get your mm. team back on top. But, yeah, I suppose there was a little bit of pressure, but not too much. Did you guys play in Melbourne at all this year? No. I was going to say, you played both Vic sides over here, SA, when did you play the Allies? In, uh, in Sydney. Sydney. Oh, in Sydney, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's probably due though. I feel like WA have travelled to Victoria more often than they've yeah. come here. Both, both Leaves teams. Leaves twice every chance, just about. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, there's a decent chance you roomed with the Claremont rep, considering how many teammates <laughs> were in the squad. But So did you do that, or did you get out of your comfort zone somewhat with someone else? No, well, funnily enough, they put me in a room with Clancy Dennis, who's oh, okay. also a Christchurch yeah. boy, so yeah. I felt felt quite at home there. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, with these trips, you sort of see all the boys and spend probably too much time with yeah. each other, but, um, but, yeah. Did you go out, like, I don't know, in... Roaming? This, yeah. Did you go out roaming? Yeah. Exploring? Yeah, so... Um, I think a few boys hadn't been to Sydney before. I'd been once. Um, so we were staying in, like, the Olympic Park area. Yeah. So we went out sort of to explore a little bit, but there wasn't much to do there because it's pretty, like, a bit of a ghost town. But um, when we went to Adelaide, that was quite good, walking around the streets, sort of um, exploring that. So, yeah. yeah. What about on the plane? Did you have a designated person you sat next to on the plane? I actually did, but I got out of it a few. So I was actually sat next to Clancy Dennis. Oh, okay. But two two blokes over sort of six foot three next to each other in <laughs> Not economy a room, doesn't hey. doesn't help. So um, the first flight over, I I sort of did my time there, but got a pretty bad back. So mm, especially before a game, yeah, yeah, like that. yeah, it was pretty crammed. So then I think pretty much all the other flights, I managed to get extra leg room on an exit nice. aisle, which was nice. Did you get any business class? That's the big talking topic. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I I tried, I tried my best, <laughs> but they weren't letting me have it. Um, well, who's the state teammate that jumped out of the blocks from your point of view? And it says down here, ideally, a non Claremont teammate, if that's possible. Since yeah. There's so many. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's so many. Like, I think the group really sort of gelled. So we're all pretty good mates. Um, there was a few Claremont younger boys that I hadn't played with that really sort of struck me by surprise. But I'd say oh, it's pretty hard. But I'll say Charlie Burke was one that. I like hadn't seen anything really of him, and um, yeah, just his role on the wing was just unbelievable. So yeah, yeah, good choice, nice. Uh, and so yeah, playing reserves footy uh, right from the get go from round one this season, your numbers have been pretty consistent in that role. So what have the twos been like, especially coming back from 18s into more senior footy? Yeah, 
um, yeah, it's been an awesome group. Like, especially early on when the league team wasn't going too well, like, we just sort of stuck together as a group um, and played some really consistent footy. And I think we got to 10 and 0. So, always nice when you're winning. But, um, yeah, since coming back, we lost the first game back, which wasn't wasn't too fun. But, uh, yeah, again, just sort of been embraced and working with the senior coaches as well, um, talking to them. Like, yeah, I can't say anything more. Speaking of which, the gel between Claremont Resies and the WA18s, Aiden Riddle, a fellow overager you rucked with in the champs and then obviously at Claremont. Yeah. Both getting sick of each other or nah, not liking the partnership? No, nah, I, I like it. Riddler's good. Um, and we both actually rate it when we're both in the forward line, which we don't get the option to do much. Yeah. Um, but I thought actually he was one in the champs that really sort of struck me, I guess, a bit by surprise. Like I've always rated him, but yeah, um, yeah like didn't play heaps with him last year. Trained a lot with him, but... Yeah, I think in the first game I rucked against him and he gave me a bath. So since then I was I sort of rated him pretty highly and I thought he was just about the best ruckman in the whole comp. And the Tigers are top and two games clear in both the reserves and the Colts, I guess the two teams you're all linked to, even though you've been in the emergency several times for the league. Yeah. Eleven that, times. Getting that text to make sure you're ready. But what are the goals for the rest of the year? Yeah, I think um, really cliche, but just sort of playing consistent good footy. Um and play my role, but... Um, Sorry, my phone. <laughs> Keep going. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> getting but, a call from New South Wales. <laughs> um, Sydney agent. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but just sort of consistent footy. Hopefully, you know, we're going pretty well in the reserve, so yeah. go deep in finals. Um, and then there's always that sort of ambition of getting a league game, which would be nice. Um, but, yeah, all three teams are in the mix, so, yeah, yeah it'd be probably, nice. Probably ideal. Uh, yeah. What do you think you have to do if you are to... Get a league game. You probably, you probably have done everything you can really to this point, but it's just like such a hard team to break into. Yeah, well, as you said, pretty hard team, and especially in the ruck. Like Ollie Eastland's pretty, yeah. he's a pretty handy footballer. But I've sort of spoke to the coaches, and um, at the start of the year, it was more just like focusing on that forward craft, and then coming back from the state team after doing that, I felt quite confident. But I've actually been moved to half back now. So yeah, I think um, Ash Prescott, the coach, he talks to me a lot um, and he's really good. I really rate him as a coach. So he's, um yeah, just been talking to me about different avenues to get into the league team. So, yeah, just yeah. sort of playing my role and that sort of thing. Just, do you not know how to put your phone on silence? <laughs> yeah, well, I usually do that. I forgot. <laughs> so interesting to know who's trying to get a hold of me from yeah. New South Wales. I don't have many connections over there. Could be a Sydney recruiter or something. Uh, I don't doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Chad, Chad Warner getting back to you. After you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um I was, I was just, when Ethan's phone was buzzing, I was thinking that, that Claremont like reserves side, how many of, uh, from that Colts flag last year have moved up and I guess made an impact? Because I feel like Claremont have always been strong around the Colts, which means they're always going to have talent coming up. Yeah. So how strong is it? Yeah, looking? very good. I think, um, can't really comment on past years, but I know the Rezies have been always like competitive, yeah. but they haven't. I don't think – I think it's been a while since they've been sort of this strong. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot. Riley Desisto, um, yeah. the captain last year, and heaps, heaps of boys still sticking around the club, which is great. Probably after the success that helps. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the, the mixture of the Colts and then a few boys maybe. You know, it's a pretty young team. It is very Claremont. young. It mm. is very young. So um, – Would it be the – I reckon Claremont – yeah, probably would be the youngest reserves team. I would well, like you look at like you look at the yes. list, right? And because um, that eighteens game in the trial match, yeah. I called that for streamer. And like looking at the team list, and there was barely anyone born um, before like two thousand and three, two thousand four. Really? Like, there might have been one or two. I think Anthony, Anthony Tracy might have been the yeah. oldest player in that game. But like so they were all like two thousand five. So I was like, this is such a young yeah. reserves yeah. team. Yeah, it's very so, young. Well, then like you look at Swans, and they've got. Ben Hewitt is their captain. He's 21. Mm. Like, a 21-year-old as a reserves captain is yeah. pretty it's just a new outrageous. age, though, I reckon. So, yeah. yeah, clearly the reserves commies is probably getting younger. I think Not as a, a whole, thing. Claremont's pretty young. Like, yeah. there's a few seasoned sort of veterans mm. um, knocking about, but for the most part, I, I think probably the average age would be around that 23 yeah. mark. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a good environment to be in because you also have the sort of 
more senior guys that can teach you a thing or two, but just also having the yeah. sort of young, excited mobs good. is quite good. But that speed could be a difference as well mm. if you come up against an older side. Well, uh, we believe you are headed to work after this to back to Christchurch. So what's the schedule like to keep you busy off field? Uh, yeah, it's with uni coming back, it's a bit busy, but um, yeah, I've got my sort of work um, as a seven A's coach for Christchurch. We're not going too well at the mm. moment. Um, I actually haven't coached a win. We've got one for the year against but Guildford, but I was away. Um, so, yeah, that, that's keeping me busy, sort of keeping me up late at night, thinking about what we can do to turn mm. it around. Otherwise, I might be on the chopping block. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that between that and uni, I also do a little bit of other work. But, yeah, keeping busy off field for sure. And what are you studying? Uh, this year I've... Got to change to um, HPA at Notre Dame second. Okay. Yeah, lovely. Well, so we'll get you on the pegs app. Yeah, yeah, we will. There is some nice places in Freo, I'm pretty sure, on the <laughs> pegs app. So yeah. get some nice discounts. Now we'll move on to the Instagram Q&As, and this is something new for this week, Ethan. Question of the week. There's a couple in content, oh, Sharon. No. So <laughs> between the three of us, when we finish the, the questions, we're going to go back and we're going to think or well, pick out who has the best question and they get a little cheeky sling from pegs nice nice so we'll work through that and you've been a notable uh, sender of questions in the past mm. so now it's your turn to face to the music yeah, yeah. <laughs> first one i don't know if you sent a question in for him or not but caleb dempster park yep. thoughts on playing finals for uwa colts if claremont get knocked out i saw caleb last week at uni um as in the football club and I don't think I can qualify, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. But Have you I know, played any games there this year? Uh, not this year. I played, funnily enough, I played a C Colts game last year because <laughs> I was coming back from injury and the A Colts didn't have a game. So, and funnily enough, Caleb Denser Park has also played a C Colts game. So, wow. the coach down there, Bill Lucas, is doing a pretty good job. Um, and I've also played an A Colts game last year. So, but my brother's there and my dad and all family have played there. So, mm. pretty close with. Um, uni, like I'd love to play play in the Colts finals because he's dropping down from league there to do that. But unfortunately, I don't think I can qualify. Yeah, in five games, probably be struggling. And yeah. hopefully, for your sake, you won't even be have to question, yeah, exactly. you have to worry about if Claremont can at least reach yeah, the GF. Sure, that's more importantly, yeah. Luke Urquhart, Black Swan or Seagulls? So, just for context, you're scared um, of one of them. No, 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 no. This no. has to be WA okay. related. Yeah. Okay. WA related. Um, Erx is very good at making a seagull sound. I don't know oh, why. Oh, like Jesus. he just, 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 oh, nonstop. <laughs> and funnily enough, against South Australia, he was just doing it in the warm up. And I think <laughs> the South Australians took it to heart. So they started making crow noises at us, <laughs> which was very weird. But um, yeah, sort of, I think the seagulls name has sort of stuck around that WA side this year, so I'd have to say Seagulls. Well, we're hoping to get him on later in the year. We're going to stick with that, and we're going to literally get him to do a Seagull noise yeah, on the pot, I reckon. I reckon take your headphones off for that <laughs> one. <laughs> <Yeah>. Could <laughs> hurt. Me All right, I like this question. Josh underscore McQuarrie. You're wearing red, so this might... Give it away. Give it away. But thoughts on the presidential election? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's absolutely shambolic. Mm. Um, it, could, yeah. it could go down in the history books. Yeah, with what's well, hundred percent. Sort of, there was a big week a couple of weeks mm. ago in um, US politics, but Even I'm not week. aligned with the red. Funnily enough, yeah. Um, but yeah, no real comment on it. <laughs> but yeah, Ty, I think it's Tyrell. It's T Y four two E double L. Best Christ, Christchurch player you've watched? Right, is that? Tyrell Stewart, maybe? That's this, his name. Yeah, maybe. right. I reckon it might be. I think he's wanting me to say him. <laughs> but uh, that I've watched. I mean, I've watched a bit of like Liam Henry and Izzy Butters. They were pretty good. Mm. Um, trying to think. Like, obviously, Gus. Gus, Gus was pretty Hugh handy. Davies. Hugh Davies. I'd, I'd, I'd stick with our year group and probably say Hugh Davies as the centre-half back. Mm. I think he's single-handedly sort of... <laughs> Put he the was, team on the back he against... He was a gun for you guys, the down minus, there. yeah. yeah. Uh, Edward Dot Greenaway. You're a new addition to the crayon box. What colour would you be and why? <laughs> Gee, that would be up there for oh, question red, of the yeah. week. You look good in red. 
thing is, I'm a staunch green man. Right. Like, the green's my favourite colour, so <laughs> any sort of shade of green, I'd say. Nice. Uh, Hamish Brogan. This could be a no comment, but he actually messaged us as well and said, you have to ask this question. Um, <laughs> you just have to do it. Why do you text my girlfriend so much when you're drunk? That, that's not a no comment. Actually, his girlfriend and I are good family friends. Um, <laughs> and most of the time it's actually because he is asleep on the couch and mm. I've got to get someone yeah, to pick him up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just being so, a good mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, maybe if he gets his sort of stuff together and isn't always yeah. asleep on my couch after a night out. Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm assuming you learnt your lesson at, uh, after the grand final last year, so now you're just, <laughs> you know, yeah, giving yeah. it just back. Just a bit more of an experience. Yeah, there, exactly. Yeah. Connor underscore Brog, was upstairs footy the foundation of your rut craft? I'd say yes. Um, What's this, so indoor footy or something? Well, yeah, so Hamish and Connor Brogan, they were our neighbours and... The Brogans are very competitive, very competitive. Um, so we'd sort of spend the day playing backyard cricket and then when maybe it was raining, we'd go up with a sort of little footy. I swear, I reckon everyone did this, hey? Like, I, mm. It's the same, and, indoor footy. And uh, it would always be me and Connor against my brother and Hamish. And, yeah, it got pretty competitive. I'm sure there was a few tears going around. But, um, yeah, I reckon it definitely gave a bit of physicality to my game. So, yes, Connor. Underscore Max underscore Hanson underscore recount the third uh, 11. Cr- 11 cricket game between Christchurch and TC resu- results etc and right. just before you answer I did look at your cricket stats and uh, you'd score 30 not out in a game your only game last year oh, if okay. that's you so yeah you're played, decent yeah well with um, I'm trying to think I think that was so Ed Greenaway who previously commented mm. we filled in for his dad's um, suburban turf team. And it was my first At game club, back. Western Suburbs. Western Suburbs. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, always loved cricket. Play, played a bit of, like, played a few years of um, first cricket at Christchurch and really enjoyed it. Um, and as we mentioned, um, I'm a 7 A's coach, but in summer I was actually the third 11 coach right. for cricket. Um, and Max Hansen was our captain. Um, that game was uh, eventful, to say the least. Um, it included, I think we won. Uh, yeah, I think we got bowled, we bowled them out for about 41 and I reckon we were nine for 33 and got there in the end. But it was eventful more because um, we got their captain out, I don't know what his name is, but he got out for a golden duck and he didn't like it and actually grabbed our keeper by the throat and there was wow. a punch up So and their coach did nothing. So I, as the umpire, had to sort of get in. Um, so yeah, very eventful, but... I think that was our first win of the year, probably fourth game in. So, yeah, things were up onwards and upwards after that. Uh, Will Munts with a Z. Who is the KOB? So, right, Muncy, uh, he was at Claremont over uh, pre-season. Very, very stiff to get cut. Like, he, I think he's down at North Beach now putting up some ridiculous numbers. But he... um sort of called himself the king of beers, which, okay. you know, and, yeah, he – no one else was calling him it, but he was running around going, yeah, kick it to the KOB. So, yeah, I think he wants me to say himself. So, yeah. Underscore Ash Gibson, what's Greeners like as a mentor? Um, so Ed Greenaway, he's uh, pretty average, to be honest. Uh, mm. He tries to give me his best pieces of advice, but um, – Unfortunately, he doesn't have much going for him. So, yeah, not great. Uh, Bailey Van, Van de Struff. Hey, Max, massive fan of yours. What do you like to do in your spare time? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I can't. He loves a surf. Unfortunately, I'm no good at – well, I've never really given it a try, but not I suppose with my height, yeah. probably not the go. But – yeah, love just, I think, like most boys would say, just getting down to the beach, having a coffee, sort of, um, yeah, playing a bit of golf, that sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah it's the life. Uh, let's go Malachi Champion. How, How long, long did, did it take? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you go. <laughs> How long did it take for your old man to bring home the milk? Right. That <laughs> sounds worse than what it... <laughs> yeah, that sounds a bit so sus. The, so, Austin Vanderstruff, Bailey's brother, mm. um, 
so Bailey's pretty good mates of mine and I've told him a story numerous times about my father and he is a massive yapper. Like he just talks nonstop and he's just a people pleaser, that sort of thing. And um, somehow I'd told Bailey this story and it got to Aussie and then it went around the whole state team that <laughs> my dad one morning, I think we were, I don't know, mum was probably making pancakes or something where she needed milk or maybe she was making a coffee and we didn't have milk and she was going to go off and dad insisted that he'd go um, get it and proceeded to come back five hours later <laughs> and we lived two minutes from the shops and we were sort of like, where have you been? He's like, oh, I bumped into this guy, I bumped into this guy and he just chatted the whole time and then, like, we couldn't believe it and that was where, yeah, he's safe to say he's never gone back to the shops again. <laughs> so, yeah, that question sounds worse than it yeah, well, is but... Did you, like, I don't know, after, like, two hours or something, you'd give him a call or something? Like, Even an hour, half an yeah. hour? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, w- I wasn't too concerned, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not actually sure how it happened. But, yeah, I know Mal and Bally, uh, and sorry, Mal and um, a few of the boys were really sort of keen yeah. on that story. Well, uh, this thing, this would probably relate to a Raj underscore Apple or warm glass of milk or turmeric latte. I don't that, know if that... It actually does Doesn't? So, okay. Um, he was one of the boys in uh, the threes team. I don't really, like, I sort of know what he's talking about, but not really. I think it's just one of the stupid questions. Um, one one boy in the team actually went up and filmed himself ordering a turmeric latte, and they said they didn't have it, so he was pretty <laughs> cut. But, yeah, he's a good fellow, Raj. Uh, Bottle zero p Rosie learnt the same 5th Division Uni Colts f- footy factory as Caleb Dempster Park. What did he learn? Yeah, so that would be uh, Bill Top, Bill. Um, so that's Bill Lucas, the uh, Sea Colts coach. Uh, right. He's doing tremendous things down there. I think they're on top of the ladder with about four hundred percent. So yeah, he's going well. But yeah, so he's mentioning that thing about me and Caleb playing in the Sea Colts, um, and he calls it the Football Factory, which is probably fair enough. But yeah, yeah learned some great things from him, just about you know repeat efforts and. Uh, He's not a big man, but he taught me how to take a contested mark. So, yeah. Well, it sound, sounds like they don't need you with the success that they're having. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Cody Angove, is it true you graduated from Yappington University? So, Angove thinks he's quite a funny man, um, <laughs> but he's actually not. So, um, yeah, he likes to give it, you know, I suppose with what I just said about my father, mm. it does sort of run in the family, a bit of talking a bit too much, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Angov's trying to be funny there. Um, I don't really know what to say. Sure, mm. Cody, sure. The, the the C Colts at uni in the Brett Jones Colts? I think that's Because Phil, Scott, Phil Scott's one. Oh, yeah, no, then it might be. I don't know if that's yeah, dropped they're si- off. They're sitting second. Oh, no. Yeah, the nine and five, apparently. Be- just for they context, the this Bill, week. their coach, did go to Europe, so they may have dropped um, off a bit, but mm, I think excuses. they're... Yeah. Tom Tom Hoggath Hoggath Who got you into footy? Uh, I'd probably say my dad Like Been into footy a long time Like actually On the weekend I found a jersey That's about that big For Fremantle But Yeah um, Dad got me playing pretty young I also had an older brother So that helped a bit Um, But yeah, also just being a massive Freo fan, like my mum, all of my mum's side, go for Fremantle. So, yeah, got in pretty young. Exciting times ahead for us Freo mm. fans, trying to yeah. keep a lid on it, of course. But uh, Amma, Amma Aaron Davis, I believe. Uh, any interest in joining the Irish League and playing for South Dublin? <laughs> Great club. Um, I actually don't know what, I think that's Amaron, maybe, yes. Davis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> haven't thought that one through um i might give it a bit more of a think going forward but yeah not too sure the when prime train played in london did you see how i don't know if you guys saw it but how long the grass was it was like what uncut grass it was like a golf course rough oh with that they were playing on it was like i don't know your foot would your foot would be covered by the grass yeah. how deep the i'm used to sort of in. being in the rough <laughs> yeah, so yes. I'd be used to yeah. it, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it just looks heavy as. You'd hate to play on it. Same again. Who would you be happier to get picked up by, North Melbourne or Richmond? 
it was that same yeah, same, same. yeah. yeah. Um, both yeah Any opportunity? E- yeah either or um of yeah don't don't really mind not too fuss on it but yeah so sydney, you've spoken to sydney anyone else that you can share you've spoken with or any other clubs number of clubs um not not personally but my manager's sort of spoken to a few and just sort of like what i can work on and that sort of mm-hmm. thing so yeah. yeah not trying to get not too caught up on it because obviously missing out last year i sort of know how this the draft yeah, works yeah. but um but yeah uh, if it happens it happens if not it doesn't the J underscore Jaden against Vic Country, I don't know if it's meant to say eighteens or sixteens, but against Vic Country, could you hear the under sixteens team taunting their backs in the background? Yeah, so that is our game. The sixteens all showed up to mm. um, Reva Fitness Stadium. Mm. Um, I definitely saw them. They were all in numbers, um, but maybe I was just working up the ground a bit too much to hear them. But yeah, yeah uh, I did. I did notice their support for sure. But yeah, didn't hear any good pieces of chat to be honest they had a successful carnival themselves yeah. I think there was about four or five all australians in there so watch out for them in 2026 yeah. yes harry mcleod four best underager in the cults don't know if this is clear on the competition but i'd say uh, under well i don't know too many in the cults comp but i'll just say from um i reckon from the state team kells goes pretty well um and who's another under? Oh, I guess Cody Curtin's goes all right. So, yeah, those two. All right, well, that's it. You so, have we, have, we, have we picked? Have we got one Ooh. in mind? I, I really – I don't want to give it to a state teammate, but yeah. I really liked Malakos. Yeah, there was good – yeah, there was good yeah. meaning behind that. It sounded <laughs> very right. I did but, like Malakai. Yeah, oh, I, I like the crayon question, to be honest. The crayon was, was good, bit, yeah. was a bit out there, a bit about myself, but I'm happy to give it to Mally if – Ethan, I'm just agree. trying to see if there's anything the else. Is say. this a three, two, one vote? Uh, system or? Yeah. Obviously, a bit of favouritism plays into it. Mally being a friend of the show. Yeah. All right. I reckon Mally. Malachi. All yeah. right. Just with the context and the story yeah, behind it, it, I yeah. think. That, that's probably one of the best I think we've had. Mm. It's like we thought it was going to be something a bit. Yeah, that's rogue. Bit in a bit rogue. But it turned out to be an absolute gold of a well, gold question. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Malachi will get be getting a little sling. Not that he needs it, but he'll he'll appreciate it. Yeah. And the five dollar sign up as well. So it's mm. five dollars. I will have to find out the the code. I believe, but um. It'll be on the socials. Yeah, it'll be on the socials. So, yeah, we'll All be right. doing that every week. So creativity is key. Yeah. So. The better the question, the more chance you have of winning a couple of dollars. Mm. Uh, all right, we'll move on to the quiz. Now, taking a look at the leaderboard. Um, it's been pretty poor in recent weeks. It's fair think, to say. I don't think I'm going to change that, to be <laughs> honest. Uh, Charlie, the other week, did get 11, though. Berkey. Burke, yeah. Yep. Out of 14. Yep. Um, Malachi, 10. Speaking of the man. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, it's all pretty poor. Who's on the bottom and how many points? Because that's uh, all I Kobe need. Austin, 7.5. 7. Which is still over 50%. And Corey, Tr- Tr- oh, Corey Tregenza, Cashel, Jake Pasini, Tom Seckle are uh, all on 7.5. Right. And Tommy's probably a bit stiff because yeah. he's not actually an athlete. <laughs> and your premiership teammate, Ashton Bryant, is on 9 oh. as well. Surprise, he's mm. on higher. Mm. He's the very smart. His knees moving, to yeah. moving overseas. Yeah, that's big. All right, well, question number one, same as it always is. You're an avid listener, so you should know what this <laughs> is. Height and weight on the Waffle website. Okay, this is one I should get. Height, 197. Weight, 86. Correct. Correct. Okay. Question number two. Your most common possession count in a game of reserves this year is 17. How many times have you had this from eight games? It's been a few, but it's always sort of around that, like 16, 17. I want to say three. Four. Four. Close. Very common. One from two. Question number three. Name the only team you've kicked both a goal and a point in the same game against this year. Uh, that was game one against West Perth. Yeah, Correct. Good, yeah. Yeah. In round one. Correct. Two from three. Two from three. Name the only team you've had more handballs than kicks against personally this year. This year. Or I, oh, I should know this because I got told I need a handball more. And 
I did it that way. Was it? I'm thinking maybe there's two that come to mind: East Frail and Perth. And I want to say I'm just going to say Perth. Bang! Perth. I was going to say it's one of them. Yep. And luckily, you didn't three from four. Right. Question number five: How many marks did you take when you kicked four goals against South Australia? It wasn't me. I reckon. It's Three? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, two of the goals were like, one of the goals was paid from advantage. You yeah. got paid on from advantage. Another one was like, yeah, in play. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean when I said like, I wasn't taking, like I actually dropped a lot of bit, like contested yeah. marks that I should have taken, but yeah, it just sort of fell my way, I guess. Four from four. Four from five. It's a good start. Mm, Your five. goal in the 2023 Colts Grand Final put you up by how many points at the time? Whoa. Second quarter, because they didn't have a touch in the first. Oh. Wait, how many goals up or points? points? Yeah. It was pretty tight. Say like 16. Ooh, six points. So it was a draw and then oh. you kicked that. So, yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. Four from six. Now, I just said we were flying as we started reading mm. the question. Now we've just dropped a question, but hopefully we can get this one right. True or false, you've had 30 or more hit-outs in a game this year. This is waffle. False, false, I haven't. Yep. 28 yeah. is the most you've had. Yeah. Which is still pretty good. Five from seven. Question number eight. How many games of PSA First have your old school Christchurch won this year in the ones? Oh. I, I know there was one. Just trying to think if they've won one since. I don't think. That, I'm going to say one. Yeah, correct. Because correct. they've fallen off a cliff. Yeah. Mm. Who well, would they beat? Guildford? Yeah. Yeah, I you might so. you might have to work your way up in the coaching ranks then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we do with coach. my coaching record there at the moment, and I don't think I <laughs> hey, have. Hey, got to start somewhere. Yeah. Uh, question number, number nine. nine. So what are we? We are seven. Six from Se- eight. Six, yeah, six. Six from eight. Question number nine. Have you given away more free kicks or received in your reserves career? Oh, definitely given away more. I don't. Know. I wouldn't say definitely. It's correct, but I wouldn't say definitely. You've only given away ten, but you've received nine. <sighs> Feels like it's. I've given away forty. <laughs> like I keep trying to. Like, I feel like I'm pretty good mates with the umpires because we have the same sort of ones, and like they always just give these holding in the rock yeah. and that sort of thing. But yeah, we are seven. So from is that equal seven bottom? From nine. At the it's moment, half yes. a point off. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Bottom. Yeah. But, but you, yeah, five points up for grabs. So this comes, yeah, so might test you a bit. But at what minute mark of the second quarter was your goal in the in the Colts grand final? So five, five points if you bang on, four points if you're within three, three if you're within five, two within ten, and a point for outside of that. So I think it was pretty early in the second quarter from memory. But I always started off. I reckon I started maybe the first six or seven minutes off that game every quarter and finished on the bench as well. So it can't be too, too early, early or too, too late. late. Yeah. I also missed one a minute later. So I'll say nine, uh, 10. Oh, did you just say nine? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was that it happened it was, in the ninth minute. <laughs> it was like 8.30 something or 8.40 something. Bugger. But you're still four points, so... That that's takes 11. you to 11, that's so you're score. equal second with oh. four others. That's, that's a very good score. Actually, and I said we I said we haven't been good lately, but Charlie got 11, which is equal second, so. Yeah. I feel, I feel like we're just waiting for a perfect score too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Well, we've but only um, had the 12 once this year, mm. and we had it four times last year, so. Yep, that's correct. But so. I feel like a lot of those 12s came late, later mm, in the year. Probably. Yeah. But yeah, that's a very good score. Yeah, I'll take I'm it. 14. Yeah, absolutely flying. Um, so, yeah, straight up in the second on the ladder. You see, you take that. And a couple of reminders. Malachi, I think we'll be sending him a message. Today. Yeah, we will. And so you got yeah. the, you got the uh, best question. So congratulations to Malachi. I'm sure he'll be listening. So. Yeah. Mm. Um, and just remember, next week or weeks to come, even more chances to... Get yeah. that. It obviously falls into the yeah, favour of the guys who know the person that's coming on it because does. they know more about them. Yeah. But we're not ruling out others who want to send in a question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be It's going to be good, yeah, creative. It's co- obviously, yeah. if we haven't asked it in our little question, yes. that helps. Yeah, but yeah. obviously, it'll help if you know a bit of 
mm. behind Insights, the scenes stuff. Yes. Insights, yep. Like Malachi. But that was a good question, so congrats to him. Uh, we'll get you on the Pegs app because obviously you're uh, at Notre Dame, so you'll get some nice discounts as well and um, you'll probably get a little sling as well from Pegs as well, like Malachi will. But uh, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, you can, of course, head over, head over to YouTube and vice versa. Remember, remember to subscribe. Five-star rating it helps out a lot. And, of course, the episode is all powered by Pegs, Field Ready Minds, and, of course, Hat Locker. Uh, Max, best of luck against East Perth. Thank you. Uh, what, tomorrow? By the time we come out, that'll be done. Hopefully that's but a win. Course, yeah. Good luck uh, for the rest of the season. Hopefully you have a little bit of su- success in September. 100%. Cheers, boys. Thanks for having me.